Hello. Let's see if this is going. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. This is Big Chads. I'm coming to you on a, what is the day? Thursday, August 11, 2022. This is a replay of the Spaces, the Twitter uh, Spaces conversation I had two days ago. It was really, really good. Um, and what I've started doing recently is I've been uploading these Twitter Spaces to my YouTube channel um, just to kind of preserve them, to keep them uh, for the long term. So that's what this is. Um, just as a reminder, I'm on Twitter at Big Cheds. Please consider following me there. I'm the author of Trading Wisdom, 50 Lessons for Every, Trade, Every Trader Should Know. There's four formats, Kindle, audiobook, hardcover, and paperback. You can get the free version on my YouTube channel, Cheds Trading. Make sure you hit subscribe right now. Go to that playlist, uh, 50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know. I've done so far 16 of the 50 lessons. I will eventually have uh, the entire book uh, for you for free. Um, and as well, check out the long form interviews. I just had a great interview with Peter Brandt. I think you'll want to check that out. Um, check out the Twitter Spaces playlist. That's where I put all of these uh, conversations. This will be number four. Um, check out the quick market updates where I kind of explain my tweets, talk about what Bitcoin's doing. Um, and then, of course, the tutorial, Masterclass TA webinar playlist. This is really where you want to start if you're just learning how to trade. If you're serious about learning how to trade, consider joining Bitcoin Live. I'm a founding analyst. I've been doing market updates there for four years. We have a world-class team. Uh, it's something I'm incredibly proud of. So listen, this is a replay. It's not live. I'm just going to sit back and play it. I may be in the chat room. I may not be, um, but I will wrap things up at the end as well. So anyway, folks, thank you so much. I appreciate you um, and I uh, hope you enjoy. So thank you so much. What's up, everybody? It's Big Cheds. If you're listening to this on replay, thank you. Uh, for everybody else, I'm just going to take a few moments to set things up, and then we will bring you in on the conversation. So, for those of you uh, who are just arriving, thank you. Again, those of you on replay, thank you as, again as well. I'm Big Cheds. You can find me on Twitter at Big Cheds. You can find me on YouTube at Cheds Trading. If you look at the top of the spaces, I have a link to my YouTube channel with learning resources, the free version of my book. I am the author of Trading Wisdom, 50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know. That book has done really well, and thank you everyone for your feedback. I'm glad that it's done really well, uh, you, but you can get the free version of it on my YouTube channel. I do one lesson at a time. I've done 16 of 50 lessons so far. Uh, I'm also a founding, a proud founding analyst at Bitcoin Live, the best in class educational platform for crypto. For four years, I've been doing a twice a week full market update. I do not miss updates. It's really important to me to continue to practice and to continue to provide value for the students there. I'm also just one member in a world class team. So Definitely would encourage you to check out Bitcoin Live. So what we're doing today is an Ask Me Anything kind of market update. We'll talk about crypto, we'll talk about Bitcoin. But um, I, I just want to hear from you folks. I want to talk to you. I want to hear from you. I want to see how you are doing. So if my voice is reaching you wherever you are in the world, hit request. Let's bring you up. Let's hear your story. Um, well, I don't need your whole story, maybe for another time. But I just love your questions. You know, I think these conversations are... Uh, incredibly valuable. And um, just as a reminder, these are recorded. When I finish um, recording it, I go ahead and upload these to my YouTube channel just for safekeeping. So what I will do is I'm going to bring up two or three people at a time. I will keep you on mute. When it's your turn and your time and I want to talk to you, I'm going to ask you to step up. But please wait um, for your turn. Also, please make sure Twitter has access to your microphone. Um, and that way everything, everything will be great. So folks, while we're getting ready here, please hit request. I want to get a lineup of people and I will bring you into the conversation. And just hang on folks till I call you till I tell you it is your turn. Nope. Gotta wait. Nope. Not your turn yet. Nope. Please wait, and I'm going to do one more here. All right, first we have Angad Saharan. 
on God Saharan. How you doing, buddy? What's going on today? I'm good, Chad. How are you? Pretty good, buddy. What's your deal? What's what's happening? No, I'm just uh, checking on you. Uh, I'm checking on you, man. No, I'm checking. Yeah, 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 getting to know how are you? I'm doing great. I'm shooting basketball, getting some exercise, and I, st- I thought I'd stop and talk to you guys for a while. So, what can I do for you? Give me your give me a good question. What's up? Uh, question. Uh, actually, I have, I have no question right now. Okay. Because uh, I, I was just uh, I was just wanted to talk to you. That's all. All right, brother. Well, I'll tell you what. I hope you're doing well. I, I hope you have yeah. a fantastic day and a fantastic week. Okay. Okay. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. All right, brother. That was fine. That that's fine too. You can just say hi. So I'm going to bring up a few of you at a time. Please wait for your turn. Let's go for Q I Q K E W I Q. It's your turn. What would you like to say today? K E W. It's your turn, buddy. Hi, hi. Can can you hear me? Just fine. Hello. Just fine. Hello. Hi, hi. I'm so excited. Wow, it's the first time that I've had the chance to actually speak to oh. you. Um, and thank you for all the work that you're providing. Thanks, out buddy. There. Um, I'm I'm a a new um, new to crypto, like the last year or so. And um, I wanted to ask if you can give me a bit of guidance on. I feel like I'm going back and forth on a time scale, like on the four hour, on the daily, sometimes on the hour. Um, could you maybe guide me on maybe I should just stick to one one time frame rather than going back and forth? Because I feel like I'm confusing myself. You are. Time. You are. So it's a great, great topic. We've discussed this before. I don't know if you've heard the other spaces, um, but we pretty much talk about it every every one. So I'd recommend wow. go watch that. So time frame, you want to avoid whatever time frame you're executing your trade on. That's the time frame you're on the trade. So if you make a trade based on like a daily, you know, resistance break or support break, that's, you know, don't just keep moving around the time frame to support your bias. Like if your stop loss hits, you know, it hits, right? So you want to, you want to, number one is whatever time frame you're trading on. Um, that's pick that time frame and stick with it, right? But while you're searching for a trade, it's okay to move around. Um, but there's times to do it, right? So you want to understand the, the the wider trend, the weekly trend, the daily trend. But right when the price is at a key level, that's when you drop to lower time frames, right? Right when it's right at that key resistance or key support, you know, right. that would be a time for lower time frames. And then also after volatility, if the price, I say this every time, if the price by the end of the space is drops like $2,000, you know, you probably want to drop to like a one hour chart and see what it does. So um, stop moving around time frames to suit your bias. If you feel like you're doing that, then I would immediately exit the trade. All right. Right, right, right. Thanks, thanks, Chad. Um, Stay safe, and, buddy. Uh, hey, have you seen my YouTube um, tutorial playlist yet? Masterclass. I, have you done that? Yeah, no, not all of them. No, uh, I, I'll be honest. I've, I've I started um, at the end of last year. Yeah. And then I, I've kind of, I've. I went off crypto a little bit. Then Good. I kind of went went back on. Then I've gone back off. So I think it's time where I'm I'm now decide that I'll come back on again. Good. Well, every time you come back, you should have a new skill set that you've added to your to your kind of repertoire. So it's important to continue to do that. Taking breaks is great, um, but kind of add some more skills every time you come back because that will help with your confidence. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of see like these people where where they put in a trade and then they'll ride it up for a couple of days. Um, or, or like a week, and I find that I'm kind of executing far too quickly. You know, and I you think have no confidence. Too... You have no confidence or conviction. That's your problem, right? Yeah, so, yeah. You know, find find a way to get that because you know you'll find that if it's a trade you've been watching and waiting for, you know, and it gets to a key point. But if you're just kind of jumping in, moving around time frames, you know, I would kind of um, step back and do some study and, and just get, just you know, like I said, brush up your skills. Okay, buddy. Thanks, bud. Thanks Thank very you, much. Man. Great, great to have you on Big Cheds. You can find me on Twitter at Big Cheds, YouTube at Cheds Trading. Please consider following me on Twitter and following me on YouTube. Um, this is a very casual conversation. There's no rules here other than let's be nice to each other. I'm going to bring you up. I'd love to hear your questions. No question is dumb, too dumb. Um, when I bring you up, please wait till I call you. I'll bring up a, a few of you at a time just to keep the conversation flowing. So please wait until I call you. I saw see, I see a lot of old faces, names. Nice to see you. Dr. Congo, it's your turn. Dr. Congo. Yo, thank you, Chad. So Yo. first of Yo. all, um, yeah, I want to thank you for all your work. I think everyone uh, in this 
chat will do, but I've been uh, into crypto since 2017. One moment. Sorry, sorry, one second, folks. When I bring you up and I mute you, if you unmute yourself, I'm going to remove you, remove you from speakers. You know the rules. You need to wait until I call you. Just don't touch anything until I call you. Sorry about that. Dr. Congo, go ahead. Yeah, rules are important. Yeah. No problem. Uh, yeah, um, so I got into crypto uh, first in 2017, and I've been following you this that year. And yeah, what should I say? I, I got wrecked, <laughs> to, yeah. to make it short. Sure. Uh, got back into cri- crypto in 2020 and uh, started following some analysts, uh, started following you more intensive uh, as well. And um, yeah, to be honest, I, I think now, Two hours, uh, two years have passed, and and uh, you're like the only one that people can rely on. That's my feeling. So no, uh, you can't. Re- you gotta rely on yourself, brother. I mean, I'm here because I, I love it, and I, I I came from the fire. I came out of the fires, where which is where you are now. <laughs> yeah, you but know? you know what I mean, right? So, so I know everything. I know exactly what you mean. I'm steady, brother. Yes, you, know? you are. And you don't have to delete your tweets if you're if <laughs> I don't have to delete my <laughs> tweets, which is a nice thing. So go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so I mean, I couldn't even delete what you tweeted yesterday with the double negative divergence. So I was like, nah, not this time. But here we are, right? So, it would have been a great spot to show. Um, yeah, yeah, but, yes, uh, but not just on mm. diverge. You got to wa- watch for a candle signal, something like a divergence, even double negative, which is powerful. You would still want to execute your trade based on what the what like uh, the price is doing, like mm-hmm. an up thrust or some kind of a low time frame price structure. Um, something like a divergence should just alert you to look for an entry, but it's not an entry in and of itself. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah, I think so. Okay, so it's go a, ahead. Yeah. Uh, so I have two questions, but they are not TA related. I think. Um, so I, I uh, know from your tweets that you like to smoke pot. So no, one, uh, I like to no. vaporize it. I like to um, I take <laughs> okay. edibles, and I do sublingual okay. tincture. I actually wrote about it in my cancer memoir. It helped me a lot. Yeah, um, I haven't read it. The side effects of chemotherapy. I, I actually gained weight during chemo. Um, mm. So it's, I'm a big proponent of medical marijuana, but I don't yeah. smoke it because it's probably not the best way to um, take it into your body. Yeah, it's true. But but you like pot. Right? I like marijuana. So, it's a wonderful yeah. healing medicine. It's very important, uh, at least yeah. for my life. Yeah. Great to hear that you're doing fine. Um, uh, yeah, but, but my question is, what what's your view? What your opinion? What's your opinion on on the cannabis stocks market? I haven't really so, looked at them. I honestly haven't looked at them. You know, from what I understand about them. Just kind of, um, you know, what's interesting to mention them because I started to really, really dig into TA back in like 2014 when the pot stocks started to become legal and penny stocks had this unbelievable volatility. And that's when I started to really get interested, mm-hmm. even though I've been tra- trading, you know, longer than that. That's when I really started to like focus on, you know, actually learning stuff. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of hype, but a lot of these companies, like there's tons of market competition. A lot of them have, a lot of them have debt. So I think you have to move past like, like the idea that like marijuana is the future um, or whatever, just play each chart based on the price structure and whether or not like these things are trending up or trending down, holding support, you mm-hmm. know, breaking resistance, stuff like that. I really don't track them. You know who does is um, Chartman Dan, which okay. is the chart, the chart guys on YouTube. He is one of my like top three ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. suggested teachers anywhere on Twitter. The guy is, I, I really look up to him. He does fantastic work. Check out okay. the chart guys, chart man Dan. He he tracks that, that sector pretty closely, I believe. Okay, thanks for the tip. I will do. Cool. Um, and my second question <clears throat> is regarding uh, tomorrow's CPI releases, right? So, is there something that you um, expect? Volatility. I expect volatility. What? I think volatility. Nice, nice trades. Yeah. I don't okay. expect like a, I'm not one of those. You know, you need like Pentoshi or Trader XO to come here and tell you about like what the print sh- or Nakamoto list to tell you what the print should be. I don't really like follow that stuff, but I do mm-hmm. know that we usually see volatility um, around that time. So I'm going to be watching very closely and probably do a little bit of short-term trading um, okay. right around it. And maybe that short-term trend might, might develop into a longer term trend kind of given the weekly um, price structure with, you know, the price kind of just chilling there between the weekly EMA eight and the uh, weekly MA 200. So, um, mm-hmm. It might set the tone, you know. Could set the tone, whatever it is, could set the tone for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So be ready I'm, for it. I'm really careful. excited. I'd say whatever yeah. the first move is is probably a false move. So just, just you know, I would oh, think yeah, about yeah. it that way. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it from my side. Thank, Thank you, you, brother. Man. Thank you, my friend. All right. Take care. Bye. Yeah. You too. 
All right, brother. That's great. I don't mind all these questions. Um, so, folks, uh, I'm going to bring you up to speak. Please wait until I call you. O2, it is your time. O2 Abdul, nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Yo, yo. What's How up? How are you doing? Oh, I'm having a nice day. How about you? I'm good. I just want to thank you also again about the master classes. Uh, I used to use uh, too many indicators, and after yeah. seeing your master class, I've deleted the RSI because you know it good. can go oversold and over both and uh, even it can go deeper than that yes the yes. second thing is the diagonal mm. it's uh, deleted now totally wow i love it and, You're, those uh, are the just, two things that... mm -hmm. sorry and about that those are the two the things which i think of, cost... uh, riding yep. the wave mm -hmm. sorry about that i yeah. interrupted you i had a phone call uh, go ahead so i was just gonna say real quick the uh, you, the rsi and diagonals are probably what costs new traders the most money using that like to, to like generate a trade signal. Those two things are probably yeah, like, yeah. what costs new traders like at least half of their money is what, I, what I've learned. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So I just now uh, I'm using uh, uh, riding the, the wave. If it's a uh, uptrend, then I'm just going to ride Good. it. Good. Good. And uh, it's been it's been good. Okay, excellent. I've uh, decreased it a lot of my losses. Very good. And thanks a lot. I hope other people see the master class and uh, learn. Well, you're so kind to to step up and say that, folks. That's the uh, playlist on my YouTube channel, Ched's Trading. There's a playlist called Master Class Webinars. Um, they're they're really a great place to start. It explains uh, my method. I, mine is not the best method. It's just the method I use. And um, I hope it's of value to you. So thanks for stepping up today, Abdul. I hope you have a great day, okay? Uh, let's move on. I'm going to bring some more speakers up. I'm trying to bring on, let's see, some new folks too, but I've got a bunch of old folks hanging out. David, it's your turn. David, what would you like to say? David Oshoscalo. Hi, Cheds. I really enjoy your material. Um, Thank you. And all your posts. Um, I have a quick question for you. It's more, I know you're not a fundamentals guy, but yeah, I just want to see your opinion on something that I was actually thinking about. Uh, okay. I'm on the sidelines. I don't trade too much right now because the chop is too brutal for me. Just being straight. <laughs> it's a tough <laughs> so channel, dude. It's a tough channel right now. Yeah. So for me, it's, it seems like it's easier to wait for, you know, the end of the channel when it really starts to break down and then close in, in on the lower time frame yeah. versus trying to get caught up in a chop. But mm -hmm. anyway, uh, I was going to ask you a question about this whole Michael Saylor thing, him stepping down as CEO. Do uh, you think, do you think there's more to it than people think? Cause I know, you know, sometimes like a big market maker or market mover, I'm sorry, when they make a move, sometimes yeah. the whole mark, I know you mentioned it. I think you had a list at one point about some kind of black swan event. It, yeah, like I, listed, I listed about five or six possibilities that could bottom. And one of them would be a permable like Michael Saylor selling and, and like being saying like he's out. Like that would cause the bottom. So that was one of the scenarios. Is there is there a possibility that something like that happening with him, with him stepping down and then having clash with his, yeah, I his mean, company there? So I should caveat like I'm not, you know, not a fundamental analyst. I haven't really followed his like history that well. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, I try to speak from like, what I've studied professionally and like I've like been doing a long time. Um, I, but I just don't like the guy. I feel like he's got, <laughs> I, I feel like RSI diagonals, Michael Saylor, fear and greed index. These things have cost new traders a lot of money. Okay. Yes, sure. Michael Saylor's out there telling people to um, mortgage their house to buy Bitcoin in the fifties. And like, yep. Yep. I, I, he put out a tweet where he was buying more in the fifties and I tweeted or replied to him. And I said, this recklessness makes me want to short micro strategy. Yeah, and you should have seen the replies. It was like, you don't understand. This guy's a visionary. He's playing chess. <laughs> you're playing checkers. I'm like, all right, I get it. Like, I get the hero worship thing. Like, we want to yeah. worship a hero. Like, I'm I'm over that. So, um, what I try to do is help people, and like, I I'm out here trying to clean up his mess. Is how I feel yeah. about Michael Saylor. So, um, in terms <laughs> of like him stepping down and what it might mean, I don't, you know, I can't. It would just be like super rampant, wild speculation. I don't, I don't yeah, think sure. feel feel on that. If you know what I mean? No, for sure. It was just an open question. I was just not something to trade off of, but just yeah. curious. As you're, I, I do think that the more um, this volatility is actually, I think, good to sift out all this, 
um, all these people that actually, you know, influence people the wrong way. Yeah. Instead of pointing back to analysis. Well, it and all doesn't that. change. A lot of the folks who, who taught, told people to buy the top are still around and have bigger accounts. That's true. Yeah. So I don't have a lot of faith in people. I mean, but I, I but my people are going to do okay. Like that's I guess, how I I guess it's good to have those top indicators then. <laughs> when they yeah. start tweeting, it's like, it's great. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, you've got to counter trade people. And sometimes you can counter trade me too, because maybe I go a little too far afield. Um, you know, I'm, I'm human like everyone else, but, um, just gotta be careful. You know, this is what I say. I have a tweet where, um, and by the way, my book three is coming out later this year. It's a quotes book. And it says something like just a gentle reminder that everyone you follow on social media, no one, so no, everyone you follow on social media, nobody has an idea what they're talking about. So you might as well rely on yourself and grab a textbook. Now I say it much more articulately than that. Like that wasn't a good quote, but basically nobody knows anything. So you better figure out for yourself what's right and wrong. Go get a textbook. That's the answer. The answer is inward, not outward, not other people. That's your, where your success and your failure, everything. That's where the blame and the credit all goes right inside. So that's a, that's a fact. I actually got your book uh, oh, from, senior, you. from senior tweets. And I, it was like a while back. And I thought, oh, my goodness, there's actually someone that actually understands trading. <laughs> and then actually I joined your Bitcoin Live. It was very, very helpful, very educational. How's that? So You're I appreciate okay. it. Okay. Well, thanks, man. I love that feedback. And it's very nice of you to say. So thanks for joining yep. us today. Okay? You take care. Bye. Yep. Wow. Wow. Well, how cool is that? I'm just a regular guy. I could bring in all these people. I love connecting with you folks. I'm Big Cheds on Twitter. Please consider following me. Also, my YouTube channel, Cheds Trading. Tons of great learning resources. Check out the quick market updates playlist where every like three or four weeks I'll do videos kind of explaining my tweets. People complain I'm too cryptic, you know, but I'm pushing you to learn. All right. So you, that's just the way it is. Um, and But I actually will do YouTube videos explaining the tweets. So um, check that out. Check out my other stuff. And I'm also the author of Trading Wisdom. And it's available on Amazon, free version on YouTube. I want to hear from you. I'd like you to request to speak. I want some new faces I want to hear what's going on. I want you, you know, I want to hear your questions and the answers, the questions and the answers, the conversation is what's um, beneficial to this community. I love doing Twitter space, Twitter spaces. This is a recorded space. I will update, lay, uh, upload it later. Alex, it's your turn, Alex. What's going on, dude? Hey, nice talking to you again. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. How have you been? What's going on? Yeah. Uh, okay. So I saw, I saw your pin tweet actually yeah. uh yeah but actually because you helped me a lot so i actually did thank help you. you spread to some of my friends i oh. hope you get your subscribers thank to you your target soon. thank you all right so uh, yeah actually i have a question uh, i actually have two questions like um actually do you add positions to your strategies like for example it's going your way and then after that let's say it breaks something break some uh support or resistance then you add some some more position to your absolutely you're talking about averaging up um, yeah. I've, tweeted, I've tweeted about this. I, I talk about it in my book as well, Trading Wisdom. Um, basically, everyone's heard of averaging <laughs> down, which, which is not really a good idea. You, know? um, you really only want to average down if you've scaled in lightly beforehand. Like if you've come in like, with a very small position and the price is now at a major support level, I don't believe in the idea of you know, adding to, to a failed idea. But a winning idea, you, want, you can average up. You can add to your winner. When the price breaks a support, I'm sorry, when the price breaks a support or resistance level, confirm in your thesis, you can add to your position. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can slow your stop loss up into profit, you know, just below or just above that level um, as well. So, you know, you want to add to winning ideas. You want to abandon failed ideas, right? Because a small, you know, all your biggest losses were once small losses begging to be cut. All right. It's actually usually on the winning positions. It's like... Uh... My problem is like a lot of time because I get greedy, I add more positions, but in the end, instead of profiting, I end up breaking even. So like uh, because, uh, from the you're last phase, much. you're doing too much. You're probably, you know, cut your watch list in half and uh, cut your position size in half and you'll just be amazed at how much better you do. Okay. Because like last time, the last phase you told me that uh, it's actually a grind. So that's why I yes. was hesitating whether should I take full profit or like, you know, should I just go with the flow and uh, write, partial, the, write a trend and add more profit. position? Look, if you break up, say your, your whole position size is $1,000. Why don't okay. break it up into four $250 positions <clears throat> and then you can move half of the stop losses up and okay. you can move those around to different <laughs> levels. That would 
it's not like do i take profit or do i take zero profit like you have to have you have to have an in between be more subtle be more flexible be more adaptable okay alex all right got it um, Nick, good to hear from you okay i gotta move on bro it's great to hear from you. all right okay? sure no problem all right let's see adam it's your turn to speak adam what would you like to say today hey chats how you doing i i'm doing well man what you tell us how you're doing so I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a longer term uh, investment here, uh, less, less of a trader uh, mentality, but I do like to follow you, take nuggets from you and try to understand trends, uh, your, at least your opinions on trend analysis. And notice your tweet last night on, on the, the double negative uh, divergence, just trying to get a better understanding from me. Yeah. I've been kind of off the sidelines. I, I got into crypto, let's call it summer of last year. So I, I wow. DCA in, obviously. Uh, you know, bore the brunt of a lot of that that upwards movement, and I just kind of yeah. kept it very simple. Um, yeah. Now that we've come down back from November, uh, you know, the other way, I'm looking to maybe get a little bit of a timed investment to to put a, to a larger chunk, and then and then resume DCAing in once I yeah. think we're at or near bottom. Okay. Um, I, I'm not convinced we're at bottom. I know this <laughs> 23,000 figure here has been a magnet, and I expect some volatility yeah. tomorrow with the inflation numbers printing. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. earlier on this space, as you had mentioned, you know, you need a, a candle to basically signal that that uh, that affirmation of, of that thesis. Uh, just looking to get some more color from you on, you know, do we do we think we're going lower? Uh, mm-hmm. in, in, and more importantly, if if we do see the volatility around inflation, mm-hmm. is is that going to be a temporary move? We're going to come right back to twenty three, or do we see yeah. that potentially being a catalyst for either a big move up or a big move down, depending on whichever way the trend wants to go? Yeah, I mean, thanks for for stepping up. Those are a lot of great questions. I'm almost um, kind of offered me a buffet of of um, or even a, a, a sweater to decide which thread to pull on that one. Um, you know, just on the on the um, divergence. You know, I like to use the on-balance volume for regular divergence, which is a reversal divergence. And, um, and first of all, I rarely use divergence, but I'll look for it kind of towards, especially when a pattern or like a channel is mature. This is a mature pattern. I mean, we've been kind of in a relief rally for, for weeks now, and um, we're at a, obviously a huge level in the weekly sam- sandwiched between the weekly EMA8 and the, and the MA200. If you've traded you know, Bitcoin for more than a couple of years, you, you should know the weekly EMA eight. I mean, it's been a cr- incredibly critical level. Um, and it certainly has been at least since April where the price has rejected it. So we're at a big spot on, on the, on the weekly. We know that. So when you're at a big spot, when you're, when the pattern is mature, which it is at this point, some type of a rising channel, bear channel, um, or as a bull thesis, uh, you have type of a stair step going on where you've, you've established this rising uh, level of demand, higher low structure, uh, recaptured uh, resistance, all that good stuff. So when you're kind of at a key po- point, which we are now, you can kind of look at things like lower time frame. You can look at divergence. Double negative. I'm a more conservative trader, so I kind of like to wait for, you know, like if, if my filter would be one candle close, I want two candle closes. Right? I like to wait. I don't want to get whipsawed. So I tend to be a little more conservative. Double negative diverse. So the OBV, the on-balanced volume, should confirm what the what the move is doing. So if the price is making a higher high, the on-balanced volume should make a higher high so, because that means the volume is supporting the move. All right. So important. But now when you have two higher peaks in price and two lower peaks in the on-balanced volume on the daily chart, that's been a big warning sign for Bitcoin. It doesn't mean the like it's about the top is right there, but it means you should look for a topping pattern and then allow the price structure to to guide you so you know anything outside of the price um you know anything outside of the price like even like back in october um i don't know if you see my tweets or when you started following me but i talked a lot back in october about the fact that since ethereum was breaking out at that standpoint it was like a really big warning sign for bitcoin so like, you know, that was a warning sign to look for a top in Bitcoin, but it wasn't like a short signal right there. You still have to let the price give you something to work with. We had the daily up thrust. We had the daily outside bar that gave you something to work with for Bitcoin. If you're more conservative, you maybe waited for the weekly 50 to be lost. That was another sign. Um, so I'm trying to like, I'm trying to scatter shot here, uh, answer all your questions. Um, CPI, I don't know, but like it could set, it could be the beginning of a trend, but I think whatever the first move is will be a false move. You know, first move you see in the 15 minute, maybe one hour, it's going to be a false move because it's going to want to trigger stop losses. You'll probably see some volatility candles, you know, like long, long leg dojis, high wave spinning tops, long upper lower shadows with small bodies. So basically look, 
in kind of more more layman's terms, look for the price to shake everybody out before it starts, whatever the move will be for the next and, few and weeks. If that does play, Daily yeah, chart, right, you've got this, big spots. And if this yeah. does pull, go ahead. If, if this is this, is this like week long movement? Is it a is it a month long? What's your time frame on a movement like that? If we materialize, this depends on what the weekly negative. chart does. It just depends on what the weekly chart. It just depends on what the weekly chart does. I mean, you know, it could resolve. It could resolve in the daily chart. The double negative could resolve to like twenty one seven and just put in a higher low, and you still would have a healthy move as far as bulls are concerned. Um, you know, but that's these little moves are just moves within, arguably, still a bear channel until you flip the daily two hundred, until you flip twenty eight k, until the weekly chart recaptures those two moving averages. So. I can see bull argument. I can see bear argument right now, but you still have that. Like you still got to get a weekly still needs to recapture the MA 200. And we're still have major danger to the long-term chart because we have seen the deepest price penetration of the weekly 200 here in its history. So Bitcoin is still incredibly vulnerable, even though we've had a really nice run 17 to 24. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to look at. You have the May 12th low, 25.5. Will that be a level? I don't know. So when you're confused, step back to a larger time frame. Watch for the price to flip the weekly eight and the weekly 200. Okay, buddy? And, thank uh, you, also, sir. I have hope a good you do well. I hope you, I hope you do well either way. Either way. So thank you. I'm Big Cheds. I'm on Twitter at Big Cheds. Please consider following me there. Also, YouTube Cheds Trading. Um, I would like you to hit request. I'd like to speak to you. I'd like to hear what your questions are. I'll bring you up a few at a time. Please wait for me to call you. I will keep you muted. If I see you continually unmuting yourself, I'll remove you. It's not personal. Uh, let's see. It would be one man crypto. It's your turn. What's going on? One man crypto. Hello. What's up, Hi. bro? Yo. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Let's took a simple question that do you think that Bitcoin has bottomed out or not? Um, I don't know. I'd say probably not, but but I'm not I don't have like as much confidence level as I had, you know, like three or four weeks ago. Okay, let's talk about recent recent price action. That we could see that uh, yesterday Bitcoin had pumped a bit like twenty four two hundred type areas. Okay. And uh, okay. and today we could see a dump towards twenty two nine hundred areas. Yep. So what is this indicating that price is weak? You will look at the daily chart. Look at the daily chart from. I'm going to mute you too. Well, and I'll I'll just take the question. Thank you for because there's a little bit of background noise on your end. So okay, good. Thank you. Just had to mute you. There's back. No. Let me mute you. All right. So thank you for the question. I'm going to go ahead and uh, answer it right now. If you look at the daily chart, you know, look at the grouping. Uh, I'm trying to multitask here. So look at the grouping of candles, say, from like July 18th, 19th until now. You've got it essentially trying to break through this zone three times. And then you look at those long upper shadows, right? You look at the uh, high wave spinning top in July 29th, shooting star on the 30th. So you can see now three times it's tried to break through this area and it hasn't been able to. So you see some short-term weakness yeah, vis-a-vis those candle signals at the upper Bollinger Band after a strong advance. And you see the, you know, the divergence. So it just suggests to me, you know, you know, if I knew nothing else was going on, CPI, whatever, I'd say, okay, it's probably going to pause here, drop back, and maybe test support somewhere, somewhere between 20.8K and 21.7K. It would be kind of my gut. I'm just solely kind of factoring in that information. Stephen Roth Geyser, what would you like to say today, Stephen? It's your time to shine, Stephen. Folks, make sure Twitter has access to your microphone. We love having you in on the conversation. This is a recorded space. I will upload it to my YouTube later. Chad's trading. Stephen, what's going on? I'm going to give you a few more, few more moments. Stephen Roth Geyser. Five, four, three. Hi. Hey, buddy. Can you hear me? Hi, Just in hi, time, hi. Stephen. Okay, thanks so much. Firstly, thank you so much. Um, I, uh, I've traded for a while. I've learned a huge amount from you. I, I trade in a very similar way uh, to you. Um, so I have two simple questions. Uh, I mean, right now, looking at the chart uh, on the weekly, 
we caught, as you said, between the eight and the two hundred. Um, yep. And um, yeah, like you, it's obviously a place of indecision. My, my main question is: Do you use Fibonacci levels at all? Do you? Do you? I haven't heard you make because I watch whatever I can of yours. I'm interested to know whether Fib levels you think can help us here. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm looking particularly here at the 1.272 mm -hmm. uh, because that is a possible re retracement area, and if we go there, then it's mm -hmm. it, it's pretty much lights out. Um, so my suggestion so. would be to, if you're interested in fibs, there's a guy named Fibo mm. Swanee. Yes, I know him well. Yeah, he's a good he's a good dude. He's smart. He's he's a veteran. Um, he's but, a fib trader. I'm not a fib trader, and you okay. know that's all I wanted to know. But so, I so, think, so, but I will yeah. say before I before yeah. I let you and before we move on, I will say mm. I think I think fibs are are a good technique. I know many excellent fib traders, so I just I just don't use them. I've really tried to simplify my method, and like what I have what I do now works. So I'm not really tinkering with it. But go ahead. Okay, so my final question then is what what do you need to see? So so my charts are set up five eight twenty yeah thirteen twenty one thirty four exactly pretty very much is very similar I've learned, I mean I've basically copied your system in many ways right well, what do we need to see if we if we trade in a similar way what would we need to see in order to continue a bearish thesis or to you know yeah I mean it's clear well let, let's let's talk about what happened in February and March right what happened in February okay. and March on the daily chart we mm -hmm. um. You know, when you have a downtrend, the down the bulls the first move for bulls in a downtrend is to force the pri price sideways, right? Um, yeah. They do they do that with kind of forming higher low structure. They do that by recapturing a lost support, um, and then the, you know specifically EMA thirty four. You know, if you mm, want to talk about fib numbers, so what happened? Yeah. What happened in February through March? What do you see? Mm. You know, w once we started to to, to flip the thirty four. Once we started to flip the thirty four, then it's a um, uh, what well, when we go into bullish territory, you say? No, what we did was we we went sideways and we formed a breakout level. The price bounced, yes, reject, rejected at forty five, dropped, yeah. bounced, rejected at forty six, dropped, yeah. bounced, rejected. Yeah. It formed a breakout level. So yes. I'm on watch for the price to form some type of a structure which would which would allow me a long thesis. It's not really there yet. Okay. So absent okay. that, absent that, okay. I'm waiting mm. to see the price flip twenty eight k. 28K okay. is a big level on the daily chart. Also, um, okay. daily MA200 is right above. That's where it rejected at the end of the February, March pump. So, okay. you know, that's okay. right there. We can't ignore it. Okay. But um, in okay. the meantime, if higher low structures remain, bulls are in the game, right? That's the name of the game, higher low. So keep but watching then, the higher lows. Mm. Okay, you'd agree move on, that... But... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Finish it up and I'll, so, I want to so... move on. All right, no problem. So you'd agree that they need to... So I've got a rectangle that sort of... The, the the top of which is about twenty four thousand, they need to be able to 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 bounce above that with a thirty four supporting supporting. Price. No, that's not a breakout level. It's not what I said. No, that's a, that's okay. fine short okay. term, but that's not a well formed yeah, breakout term. level. Short, short There's not term. really a break. You have but you okay. have resistance mm -hmm. just overhead twenty five five May twelfth low. Correct. Twenty k. So great great to have you. Hopefully see you next spaces. Okay, Stu, uh, Stephen. Great. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thanks. I pre I appreciate you, man. Great to have you uh, send it. It is your turn. I'll bring up a few more. Please wait until I call you. I'd like to hear from you. Hit request, folks. You are my, We're all friends sitting around in this crypto game. Hit request. I'd love to hear from you uh, what your thoughts are. Send it. What would you like to say today? Send it pod. <laughs> hey, Chad. Thanks for, thanks for having me up. I was just going to actually um, give a little bit of insight into uh, Mount Gox. I, cool. Um, Go for it. I heard you you talking about it a few weeks ago on a space. Nope, I, no, that was not me. That was not <laughs> me. someone in the spaces. I think was asking you about what effect Probably. it might have. Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm currently a claimant, so I'm just waiting for for my claim to go through. Um. But I think there's a bit of a bit of unknowns. Um. So that I guess the first one is uh, a lot of people aren't um considering that we we were given an option to receive cash as well. Yep. Um. So they're actually going to be liquidating on behalf of us. If you decided to take cash, I, I decided to take Bitcoin. Um, so there's a liquidation there that's out of our control. That's that's fine. Um, another one that people aren't necessarily aware of is, I guess, over the last, I think it's been about seven years, um, independent companies 
have been contacting us and buying claims off us uh, before they're resolved, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like J.G. Wentworth, when you've got like an annuity, yes. these folks want to come in and yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, there's always a piece of the pie in there for somebody, right? Exactly, exactly. And then I think probably like the biggest one um, was that we've been given like two options. And one option is to receive uh, the funds uh, straight away. Um, and then the other option is to receive them at a later date. And if you select to receive them at a later date, there's a small chance you might receive more. But yeah. that's being held up by a big lawsuit at the moment. So it could actually be quite a while till that happens. So that there's, okay. there's probably a chunk there that won't get a release to market straight away. Okay. Um, I think that was that was pretty much it, really. Um, but I, okay. I guess I hope that. I hope that maybe brings a few things to light that some people weren't necessarily aware of. I think it's a bit more complicated than what it, I guess, looks like on the face of it. I think that's wonderful that you've stepped up. I think you've added a lot of value here. Um, I think people are um, curious about what is going on. Um, It doesn't necessarily mean anything you said is tradable, right? You're not going to go open a trade, but you've added value. You've added information. So I appreciate you stepping up here today, buddy. I think, I think the final thing, actually, is that a lot of yeah. people are saying at the end of August, but from all the legal documentation that, that I was sent, they're, they're, they're not even, they haven't even told us which exchanges they're going to do it through yet. Um, there's so many things that are unresolved. I haven't even sent them my details back yet um, in the last correspondence. So, you know, right. to, to, well, to tell say you what, it's going to be in this month. It, if you don't mind, if you've seen uh, me doing more of these, you know, I'd, love, I'd love to hear an update from you uh, in the future, okay? Sure thing, man. Appreciate it. I appreciate you, folks. So here, my opinion on that is you can spend all day speculating about what it means for the price, or you can literally just watch, maybe set an alert and see, does the price hold support or not? Does the price break resistance or not? All these things we're talking about, speculating about what things that could move the price. Yeah, that's great. We do that because we're bored. We're waiting for the price to do something. Just watch the price. The price is the filter. The price tells you if anything, that, that nice guy who just stepped up and told us about, it, it, the price will tell you if any of that is important. So that's my opinion on that. Uh, Vera Sarkozy, uh, what would you like to say today? Hi. Hi, hello. can you hear me? Hey. Hi. Hi, hello, my friend. What's going on? Okay. Thanks for hosting this space. So sure. my question is, um, you tweeted today about a pattern for Bitcoin, a weekly week pattern for bitcoin i think it's called hikake or something yeah, like that hikake, inside bar if it, mm-hmm. it's failure it's like um it's just basically yeah. like a like a trap it's almost like an up thrust or a spring where you have mm-hmm. the break of a level and then it's a momentum reversal right but when i look at the snb 500 or the nasdaq or even ethereum i don't quite see the same pattern so i just wanted to okay. ask you if if you do you look at those charts do you think those yes. are relevant or or no. is it only bitcoin that's relevant correct it's only well i'm if i'm trading bitcoin it's the bitcoin chart that's relevant because everything outside of the bitcoin chart is speculation the btc dominance the total market mm-hmm. cap the fear and greed index and even the correlation that we've seen the between correlation. s and b yeah okay yeah. so there's a strong correlation over time but like doesn't mean like it your trade will but you're still trading whatever you're trading. You're not trading a correlation. You're trading an asset, and that's based on what that price is doing. Is it holding support or not? Mm-hmm. And, you okay. know, you've got to find a way to simplify your method because when we add all these qualifiers, we're just overcomplicating things, and then we're adding these elements of doubt. We start to doubt ourselves, right? You can't, you can't, you can't exist as a trader, kind of um, in that in that function. Yeah, so, so that's where I go wrong, probably. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, you got to make you look. Fire, take a shot, fire it out. Fire, take your shot, let it play out. Based on the chart you're trading, based on the fact that Bitcoin just had a false move, or based on the fact that Bitcoin's now testing support, or based on the, the fact that Bitcoin is forming an ascending triangle and it, it's testing the breakout level, not because whatever the S and P is doing. Mm-hmm. Like, go okay. play S and P. Go take your call or put options in the S and P if you want to watch that chart. Okay. But focus okay, on what's in front of you, okay? Thank you. Mm-hmm. Great to have you, Vera. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see who's up next. Folks, I'd like to have you in on the conversation. I'm Big Cheds on Twitter. Chart guy, newbie helper, trained in Japanese candlesticks, classical charting. I passed CMT level one. 
I'm a founding analyst at Bitcoin Live, and I'm the author of Trading Wisdom, 50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know. My third book's coming out later this year, Trading Quotes, and I just like talking to you folks. So, uh, Chimp FOMO, what's happening? What's up, Chad? How are you? Um, Good, dude. All, thank Good. you for everything. All you, I love your content. I mean, I always tell you on the Twitter. Now, um, Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, my question is regarding the ETH trade. I opened up a position at 1610 and it's high leverage. You. So we lost you. We lost you. You still there? Yeah, can you yeah, hear me? Yeah, now? so go ahead. You open up a position. Yeah, I open up a position on ETH at 1610, but it's a high leverage position. I know I I mean leverage is poison, I know that, but I'm kind of stuck in this situation no, when I'm not starting stuck. to trade. You're never stuck. Okay. Okay, but you know I'm learning, yeah. right? So uh, this market is very news dependent. Yeah. I would like to know my invalidation point. Today, this morning, I woke up and I was like, you know, yeah. uh, I'm going to hit my liquidation point And now it's, re it's finding support again. Well, what's your, your uh, stop loss is when your trade idea fails. I mean, that's, that's, it's that simple. So what's your trade idea? Yeah, my trade idea is to hold this position uh, for a long time for target of 2000 at least on ETH. No, no, that's not a trade idea. No, 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 that's, that's what you hope. I'm okay. not asking you about what you want to happen. What's your trade idea? What is the reason you're in the trade? What is it that you've seen that the price is doing that you think will do? You need to have an idea that you can also quantify when okay. the idea fails, right? Okay, so my idea is the following. I would, I, my idea is to keep the trade open until it loses the trend. That's, and this morning, yeah. it started looking like the trend was being lost, but now it's finding support. How are you, so how what, are you defining the trend? Well, just a simple line from the look from the previous bottom to the to the you know whatever mm -hmm. uh, connecting candles, right? All right. Uh, and and facing that one thousand seven hundred eighty four resistance. Mm -hmm. so, so listen, have you watched my my um? Look, have you watched my YouTube playlist called Masterclass Tutorials? Not yet. Yeah, I'll, you got to exit all. You got to next. Don't open any new trades until you go watch that. You can trade this one, but don't open any new trades until you've watched that because you're, as Peter Brandt says, a little bit of information is very dangerous. And you have a little bit of information right now. So I agree. I okay, so I would open no new trades until you go watch that playlist. Um, because you, you don't have a trade idea and you don't know when that trade idea fails. So it's impossible for you to define your risk, which is what you need to do. Okay, so um, let me finish, so those let me videos. Finish, let me finish, brother. Okay. Yes. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take someone else, but I'm gonna finish the, the. I'm gonna give you all you need here. Let me just finish, okay? So what you want to look at with Ethereum is the daily MA20, the simple moving average, the middle Bollinger band. That was resistance from April, right? You can see where the price uh, rejected. If you pull up a daily chart and you look at Ethereum, right? You can see where the price rejected back. Uh, beginning of April and then the middle end of April and the beginning of May and then again the end of May and then again the beginning of June right and then again the end of June so we know I mean that's a big level now it's flipped into support it was support at the end of July it was support here at the beginning of August so if you're following the trend on ETH it's not some random diagonal the trend at ETH is the daily MA20 so watch that um, this is a great call, and and hopefully, you know, sometimes that can be harsh because it's out of love. If you can't tell me what your trade idea is, then you, how do you know when it fails? That's your stop loss. Your stop loss is when your trade idea fails. Here's an example. The price is rejected at 100 five times in a row. Now we've broken up above 100. I'm long because the price broke above a key level. How do I know when I'm wrong? The price now, if it drops back below the key level, I know I'm wrong. So I can exit my trade. That's, that's defining your risk. You have to be able to define your idea. If you can't define your idea, how do you know when it fails? Like, I hope it goes to 2000. Like, that's not a plan. Um, Dave, what's up, Dave? It's your turn to speak. What's going on, Dave? Dave Green Man. Dave, the green man, what's going on, Dave? Give you a few moments here, Dave, and I'll move on to the next speaker. Just as a reminder, I'm on Twitter at Big Cheds, YouTube Cheds Trading. Dave, I'm going to give you a five count here. Five, four, three, two, one. Green man, Dave, step back up again. We'll try to get you uh, in on the conversation. Uh, 
Claudio Simon. And by the way, if I say your name wrong, I apologize. What's going on? Hey, Cheds. Um, hope up? you can hear me. I'm doing really good, yeah. actually. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, man, I'm in trading for a little time. I mean, less than a year, but I'm in crypto for maybe six, seven years. So I pretty pretty much know the deal around here. But I'm trying to learn from you all the good stuff that you are sharing. And thank you for all the effort in that direction. My question is quite simple. You said at some point that if you have a trade idea that is based on a candle that, I don't know, let's say it's a four hours candle, you should stay and stick in that trade idea for a limited time, uh, limited like for the candle that you are seeing the trade idea. Yeah, this is in relation to a discussion I had with Big Chon. It's like if you're making a trade based on a five minute chart, it's a five minute chart idea. It's not like the weekly trend has changed. It's a five minute or a 15 minute chart idea. So you want to kind of trade within the scope of your time frame. Yes. So you basically are saying that uh, if uh, I'm seeing a, a signal and I, I, I see a th thesis there, I shouldn't stay more than two, three candles to invalidate my idea, even if the no, price it depends. It depends. It depends on what the context is, right? It depends where we are in the channel, right? When do you this the kind of the, the um, what's missing from this is the different time frames, right? So you want to always have understand the larger time frame. And then when the price is at a key resistance. So I don't know if you heard the last caller on Ethereum or where I made the, you know, when you're, it, it breaks at a hundred, test for a hundred, test a hundred, test a hundred, right? Yeah. When the price is at a hundred, that's when you go to a low time frame. When it's right at a key level is when you drop to a lower time frame, but not mm -hmm. when it's kind of just chilling in the middle of the channel. Like that's not when you go to lower time frame. So you can make a trade. So if it was right at the key level, you could make a four hour trade and maybe even stick with it if the daily and then the weekly trend confirm that that is a reversal because you will see the movement on the smaller time frame first. But that smaller time frame movement needs to be viewed in context of what the larger time frame is. And unless it's at a really key or pivotal spot in the chart, it's unlikely to really matter because the longer the time frame, the stronger the signal. And what about these crazy weeks that are keep happening? If if it's yeah. waking up and then yeah. go back, how many times would you would you try again your thesis? Let's say me personally, probably I try no more than three times because I'm not just going to get chewed up. Um, you know, I have no problem going twice. You know, um, in that example before, it breaks out over 100, and I get stopped out because it drops down to like 97 or 96. If it broke up over 100 again, I would go long again. Right. I would yeah. try that at least a couple times, but I'm not going to do it forever. I'm not going to because the more the more it chops, it's now it's not respecting that breakout level. You have to adapt to what all the new information, right? Because because what was once a clean level has now become a muddied level, a less a not as clean a level, right? So I'm going to adapt mm -hmm. to, to that. So that's what you need to do as well. Okay, bud. Thank you so much, Chad. Keep Thanks it up. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much. Good luck to you. All right, Dustin. What's up, Dustin? It's your turn. How's it going? Good, dude. What's happening? So I'm in a short position on Rune, and yeah, um, basically I want to. I, I hear you talk a lot about horizontals versus um, diagonals, and if you look at uh, Rune or a lot of these charts, they have a pretty consistent diagonal line that's uh, continually being tested. Uh, Let me go at, take a look because I don't have I don't have the chart um, in my mind. Like I do maybe some of these other ones. So let me go take a look. But uh, please continue. So basically, like right now, it's at the support <laughs> diagonal. And I'm in profit. Um, I, it's a very small position. Are you uh, talking about daily chart or what? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, okay, fine. Rising demand, higher low structure. And you've bounced right into the lows of the May, June. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the charts look like this. Exactly. So yeah, all right. So my question is like right here. Um, if it broke down, it would be a, I would be in a major gain, but at this point it looks like a good time to take profit and potentially switch to, um, long, or switch to long position. You know what I mean? I think the big pivot, like when I try to look at the chart like this, I'm trying to, it's not a clean chart, you know, in the sense there's not a very clear breakout level. Um, what I would look at is like I talked about higher low structure before and momentum. So for we, for me, what I would just say to myself is, look, I'm going to take the low from May 12th and I'm going to take the low from May 27th, right? Which is right around 2.35. 
and I'm going to draw it across. And that's basically where we had the morning uh, star or the morning doji star, July 25th through 27th. Um, that level, If that level holds, I think you're good. So that's a key momentum level. I kind of look at everything just above it as chop. Um, given that you've got resistance, you know, all the way from from 270, you know, up to really 370. So it's not like a super clean breakout level. I would just look for a momentum level that needs to be held, which is the prior lost support affirmed as resistance end of June, affirmed as resistance end of, uh, beginning of July. And then again, middle of July and now flipped into support with the throwback and the daily MA50 tag. So you just want to see it stay above 237 area, 235 area would be my opinion. Um that's just how I would look at it. I, you know, what, how you handle your trade, I think you need to kind of figure that out. But that's just my sense of the chart is above or below that level. And so the, the only other thing is like if I were to take like 50 percent profit, move my stop loss at entry and then it breaks down, I could just wait till those levels and wait to see if it confirms to then switch to a long position potentially. Sure, man. Be adaptable. Experiment. Play with it. And you need to be betting small amounts so you can experiment and uh, learn. So I think you're on the right track, man. And uh, let, you know, hopefully it does well. Let us know how it goes. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Cheers, dude. All right. ADZ, I see you back. What's going on, bud? What would you like to say? How are you doing, Chad? First of all, thank you very much for letting me speak. Love your content as always. Everyone subscribe. Great, great trader. Great guy. Um, I benefited from the weekend pump um, on a lot of the alts, uh, closed up my long position, saw Bitcoin reject uh, swing failure pattern at the key level, the breakout level, as you've been telling everyone. Um, now we're trading possibly back in the range. Yeah. Um, is it wise to look out for trading below the EMA 34 and then breaking down back into the range lows? Is that is my thinking correct here? You know, it's a debate over what level to watch here. Um you know, in terms of the higher low, you know, mm -hmm. the, the daily structure is interesting to me. If you kind of observe the, the um, rising higher low structure, you take the June 18th low and then you take mm -hmm. the June 30th low and then you take the July 13th low and then you take the, you know, July 26th low. You see the higher lows. Mm -hmm. um, and if you note the, the price reaction after forming each of those lows had been kind of an immediate impulse towards the upper Bollinger Band, like a strong mm -hmm. move. Right. Yeah. This, the most recent quote-unquote higher low the um august 4th low uh -huh. we didn't do that we did kind of an equilibrium or a tightening pattern right uh -huh. so something's changed there so i you know you can kind of uh detect the subtle change in price structure on the daily definitely yeah. number one number two i'm glad you see that number one number two we just had the tightest weekly range since october of 2020 yeah like, so we're about that. to have a ridiculous move i don't know what direction it is i think the market's really going to find a way to punish uh, impatient traders in, in, in the coming days. Mm -hmm. Impulsive traders, yeah. Yeah, definitely agreed with all those points. I'm following your tweets. You've mentioned all of those. Uh, tomorrow should be interesting. Every day is interesting. I'm glad to be alive. So thank, thank you. Thank you, Chad. All right. Take care. Good to hear from you. Uh, Jay, it's your turn. I'll bring up a few more. Please wait till I call you. JR, what's going on? Yeah, hi. Hi, Chet. Uh, Hi. Thanks again uh, sure, for sure. all your information and uh, thanks for having us here. Cool. So um, I have one basic question and uh, one se a second question. So the first one is like um, coming back to the chart. Um, I see a lot of, you know, uh, different, especially trend lines. Um, when they pull it, it, it makes a different line if they use a, a regular chart or a logarithmic chart. Yeah. So when and why would you, uh, you know, choose the one or choose the other one? And uh, yeah, especially why. And the second question would be um, coming back to the DXY, which is actually pretty strong. And we have divergences on the RSI. So coming that uh, with this, connecting this to the whole macro situation and the CPI coming. So um, you were a little bit uncertain about just watching the CPI data and watching the move. But what yeah. are your true um expectations what do you think gonna happen i think i think everyone's gonna get punished i think the market it's not, they're not gonna make it easy whoever they is the uh the invisible force behind the price which really which really is just supply and demand um okay. but if you look at and i'll answer so i'll answer the second part first if you look at like think about a double bottom and if you look at a lot of double bottoms if you ever notice how the second low is sl often slightly lower yeah what that's doing is you're just 
triggering stop losses. Right. It's before it bounces. Like stop run. <laughs> yeah. I just expect like stop runs in both directions. Um, volatility and, and stop runs in both directions. Um, I'm not like an, a great economist. I'm not even a bad economist. I'm not an economist. So um, I just, you know, I don't know, bro. I'm the CPI. So log scale, you want to use log scale for volatility charts, right? Charts like Bitcoin that has like big volatile moves. You need to use log scale because it shows the proportionate, like the percentage move. Okay. So um, that's, that's when you want to use log versus linear and for longer time frames too, generally speaking. All right. All right. So listen, um, CPI, I mean, look, uh, look, do we, we look, we either close above the weekly EMA eight or we don't. We either continue to hold the week, weekly 200 or we don't. Like, I think we need to have kind of a binary focus here. Are right, you coming that, back to Bitcoin? Yeah. I mean, Bitcoin, yeah, I was, I was thinking you know? about the DXY. Oh, DXY. I mean, it's still pretty bullish. It hasn't had follow through it, you know, uh, yet, but it's still consolidating. It's still definitely bullish trend right now. Um, for sure. Uh, On the other it. side, we have the RSI uh, divergence. Bearish RSI divergence. for what? Regular or hidden? Uh, no, regular bearish divergence. Yeah, I wouldn't and... use RSI. It's a bounded oscillator. RSI is, 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 um, is a bounded oscillator. It has a fixed limit. I recommend not using it for di regular divergence. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, you can do it, but you better, you, better, you better see some candles guiding you or directing you to enter a trade. Uh, use on balance volume an index oscillator that uh -huh. kind of adds up the buy and sell volume. Like RSI like has to top off. It's bounded as a fixed limit. Um, so it's not like you see in the DXI like crashing uh, pretty no. soon. Why? Because the RSI? Are you kidding me? Like why? Like RSI is now cooled off. It can make another run and not be overbought. Yeah, that's it's, that's true. I'm just seeing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like RSI. This this uh, rounding bottom and probably Don't focus gonna, on that. gonna you test wanna, the... look, look at the weekly chart. It's not hard. Look at the weekly chart. Look at the uh -huh. January 17th highs and look at the March 2020 highs. It's just obvious what level you want to kind of see hold. Right? Yeah, that's, that's true. So much more important than the RSI. Like it's yeah, what the yeah, price that's... does. Just focus on the price. People lose so much money with the RSI. This is why I'm, you know, Michael Saylor, RSI, Fear and Greed Index, you know. These are, you know, yeah, that's, like, that's true, but the, yeah. the level we're talking about is still like another 5% move or something. What, 103? Uh, I mean, you're looking, you want to know what the trend yeah, is. Yeah, right, doing. 103 or like like yeah. 100. Well, 100 would be, would be below that level. You would have essentially lost that level at 100. I okay. look at, like I said, look at those two seven, 2017 highs, look at the April 20 highs. Any kind of a long term trend will continue to respect flipped uh, support and resistance levels. So, um, thanks for stepping up today. All right, buddy. Thanks. Cheers. I'm Take Big care. Chads. Thank you. Take care. I'm Big Chads on Twitter, author of Trading Wisdom. You can get that book for free on my YouTube channel. Check the pinned tweet at the top. New traders must watch the tutorial masterclass playlist. Um, check out my quick market updates. And if you're really hungry, thirsty, you want to learn how to trade seriously the right way, join Bitcoin Live. I'm a founding analyst. Twice a week, I do a full long-form market update and take chart requests, answer questions. I do it twice a week. I haven't missed an update in at least three years. No matter what I'm doing, I stop and I do that. It helps me get better. I keep grinding. And that's something really special I'm proud to be part of. You, you sign up, you get access to the whole team's content, not just mine. Uh, Dog Land NFT, what would you like to say? Hey, hey, uh, hi, Chase. Yo. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, today's my uh, question is actually about the BTC. But I, I saw you could, uh, we could ask, ask you anything. So I should try to uh, yeah. uh, have a question for you. Yeah, thanks. So uh, the thing is, we, uh, we are in a few friends. We are having the uh, NMT project just started three days ago. So uh, if you could have any critics and or any suggestions. Yeah, for uh, what? Would help for, for NFT? Yeah, for, uh, for our NFT, uh, yeah, I have no, I have no experience with NFTs, um, zero. So I, I uh, don't have much I to help you on that. But I will say, I hope, I hope you're successful. And if you, whatever you do, I hope you take care of your 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 um people because the, the community will be yes. important. Okay. Uh yes yes we also got a. All right, sorry about that. Um, let's Apollo. It is your time to shine, Apollo. What would you like to say? Yeah, how's it going? Um, pretty, pretty good. 
Hey man, just a quick one. Uh, I'm just working, listening to an audio book, Trading in the Zone. Forget the author. Um, yeah. I'm kind of new here, but uh, yeah, man, just want to thank you for your energy. And, um, oh, cool. Introduced to you like a month ago, and uh, you seem to just spread good vibes. And, uh, you know, thanks for the education and the wisdom. I got a shitload to learn. Oh, sorry, watch my French. Um, but just thank you. Well, I want to say thank you, man. Um, like I, I, I've been, I ground up from, from like noob to where I'm now, which is like slightly better than a noob, you know, like <laughs> I understand it's a long road. And like, if you look, you know, my motto, I've had my motto since 2015, helping new traders avoid my old mistakes. Like, and that's like just it. what it is. You get it. And I'm just a regular guy. And I just, you know, you gotta take, I'm always a people person. So it all works for me. And just thanks. Thanks for being, for saying that and, and stepping up. No, I appreciate it, dude. Very, uh, you know, inspiring stuff. And I uh, hope to get there and, you know, make more sense of all of this in the future. Just keep going. Uh, go binge. Go binge watch my YouTube. I think it's going <laughs> to help you a lot. Okay. All right. Thanks, man. Have a great day. All right. Talk to you. Uh, let's see. We'll do a few more. SM, uh, what would you like to say today? Chad, how's it going? Um, I'll be Good, quick dude. too because you're quick. I really like you're like a blackjack dealer that deals really quick in Vegas rather than the slow guy. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. Um, Hey, I'm uh, speaking of noobs, like I'm not a noob. I've been in financials for like a decade. I'm trying to get a lot better at trading. Like, honestly, I love doing it, even though I suck at it. I'm trying to do it the right way, though. I'm reading. I'm almost done with Neeson's book, the Japanese candlestick charts. Good, good. Uh, I'm halfway through. I'm kind of going back and forth between Western and Eastern TA with uh, is a Chabacker's book. Yeah, the, Chabacker, uh, yeah. other one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I kind of want to read your next one. Uh, oh, you got to read mine have. first. You got to read mine first. Well, I mean, I can't now, you know, we're, we're halfway through here. You're, uh, you're, you're number three, but no, I just, I want, I don't know how long you've been trading, but I've, yeah. you know, I've followed you probably for three or so years on, yeah. on Twitter. I know you have Bitcoin live, but to get to the point of my question, what I wanted to ask you is where would you get started? Somebody in my shoes. Again, I have extensive, um, experience in financials. I follow this stuff every day. I have for like a decade. I'm trying to get to the point where, I could eventually maybe even become a professional trader, but I've read these books or getting to the point where I'm finishing these books. Where would you start if you were me? Like take me back in time yeah. to 10 yeah. years ago, you or whenever you started. Yeah. Where would oh, you go? I just turned on the uh, TV by mistake. Didn't want to do that. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, so I've actually been trading for around 15 years and um, I wish if I could go back, I wish I'd started reading textbooks earlier. Um, you know, you're starting with the textbooks, which is you're asking me where to start. I mean, man, you're already. Well it's it's massive path. difference. I mean, no, I've messed around like doing it before. I'm like, I have no like you were just talking about the plan. I had no yeah. fucking plan. Excuse my language, but I had yeah. no plan when I'm going through it. Yeah. Um, and it's totally like what you said totally resonated because now I have a plan or will whenever I start. So, yep. so here's the deal. So I would have started out. There's a couple of things I would have loved that I had done. I would have definitely started um, with textbooks and then I would have done a few things. I would have played from. So first of all, I would have cut my position size, you know, about 90 percent. Right. So I could really just grind out and get experience when I started. to. I'm a pretty good poker player. I'm not great, but I'm pretty good. When I started to learn how to do tournaments, I played five dollar tournaments. I played a few thousand of them to really get like some some kind of muscle memory. Um, so I rec I recommend really having a really small position to kind of help you um, get some experience. I would have told myself to focus on continuation plays rather than reversals. I've lost in my career. I think 90 percent of my losses come from reversal plays um, because you're trying to guess when a trend will change rather than actually waiting for it to change and then riding it and benefiting, you know, kind of from the, the deviations within the trend, the Bollinger dips. Um, the retests of support, the breakouts, you know, all that stuff. So I would tell myself to play continuation plays rather than reversals. Um, and then I would tell myself to never add to a losing play, right? If I just did that, I mean, you know, I mean. That, that, that's been my biggest nemesis, I feel like. And it's more of just because I, yeah. I actually play poker too. I love blackjack, you know what yeah. I mean? Like doubling down all that crap, splitting eights. Well, you're not um, getting pot odds. Yeah. You're not getting pot odds. You only have Correct. like two cards to hit. Correct. And so you yep. don't, you know, don't double, don't, you know. Um, but it's also you're stubborn and you don't want to admit you made a mistake. But Correct. you'll find that it's the most refreshing thing because taking a small loss can feel like a huge win yep. um, because you've defined your risk and then you feel like you're in control. So you have to control your risk and define your risk. If you don't, the market's going to do it for you and then you're going to lose your whole bankroll and then you're going to say, what am I doing? I'm a smart person. Why can't I figure it out? 
So yeah. to find but continuation, your continuation you. is your big one. You, you would if oh. you could go back continuation rather than reversals. Oh, I mean, yeah. Why are you trying to make it hard on yourself? Continuation sure. play a bullish throwback and ascending triangle breakout, bull flag breakout. Um, but also, um, what's a great entry too, and I would have told myself to look for are like false breakdowns, like a head and shoulders that doesn't break down. Gotcha. Right? Okay. Fail stuff like that, up thrusts and springs, false bear and bull breaks. You know, focus on it that way. But just avoid reversal plays. Don't add to your losers and bet less. Keep a journal and uh, be willing to say I messed up, you know, as quickly yep. as possible. All yeah, right? being humble is definitely something I've, I've gotten. But, hey, really appreciate the time. Thank you thanks, again. Thanks, dude. Hey, yep. thanks for stepping up. Hey, L- Lath, it's uh, your turn. Hey, Chid. How are you today? Good. What's, what's cracking? Uh, I just have one question. By the way, that I'm a big fan. I am a Bitcoin Live uh, member. I see. I'm trying to see all your videos, but you know, <laughs> you gotta keep. You gotta do your family. homework. You gotta do your homework. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I just have one question. I have uh, my kid is 12 years old, and uh, he's kind of a freak of all these, you know, trading with uh, with crypto and all these things. And I don't know where to make him start exactly to do his homework and study and, you know, what? becoming a, a, maybe a future trader in the, Jeez. in the, you know, in the... Oof. Oof. teach him, yeah, teach him a skill, teach him an HVAC skill. He needs to learn plumbing and, and electrical work. Those people are never out of a job. Yeah, right. I know. I know I'm trying, but you know, these kids nowadays, you know, all of them that they are thinking about, you know, making a quick uh, yeah. profit and So listen, I mean, look, you're it's your son, your child and and um <laughs> hopefully you have her, their best interest in mind. Um technical analysis, class read the text the textbooks I've recommended and paper trade. Have them paper trade for 6 years until they turn 18. Yes, yes, yes. I will do so. I will do right. so. Thank Just you. Thank you. And, and, all right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thanks for being a member. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right. I don't know. How, I don't know how I feel about that, but uh, <laughs> uh, Suhail, Suha, it's your turn. Suha Ozi. What's up? Suhail, Suha. Hello. Hello, mate. Hello, Chad. Yo. Yo, bro. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing good. Talk to me. Talk to us, folks. What's going on? Uh, see, I have two questions. That's basically one is which is more reliable? Like, is it a week to week or a body to body? It's not about either. And maybe of them. It's about the price estimate. See, it's not about the wick or the body. In Japanese candlestick theory, it talks about it being about the essence of the body. But that's with legacy markets where you open and close. You can de-emphasize that in crypto with a 24/7 market. Like when you're drawing a trend line, it doesn't matter which wick you use. You're really trying to just capture the essence of the of the price movement. There's a filter around the trend line. There is no line. There's only a trend. Okay. What's your next question? And next question is: with the, if we if we are trading for the time frame of four hour, whether the uh, it will get invalid after the four hearts, or we need to wait for like a day or something. It's up to you on your on your confirmation method. Intraday, one candle close, time filter, percentage move. That's based on how much time and attention you have. This is a question, and great, thank you for stepping up. This is a question we had earlier. I also mentioned if you're trading on the four-hour chart, that's the chart you want to stick to in terms of when you're going to you know, trigger your stop loss or not understanding that you use lower time frames at key spots, and you should be really careful trading off like the one-hour, four-hour, uh, kind of in this type of a choppy range. Uh, one truth, what's going on? What would you like to say to the group, folks? Um, I'll probably wrap this up soon, but you do have time to request to speak. What's up, One Truth? Hey, what's up, Chad? Thanks for everything you've been doing. I appreciate it very much. Um, Thank you. I, I have a quick question on trend lines. So, uh, and as they are support and resistance, I've heard both sides of this, so I wanted to get your take on it. Each side, the price, each time that the price hits a trend line, mm-hmm. does that trend line become weaker? Or stronger? That's a great question. So have you seen my, um, I have a lot of thoughts on this. Have you seen my uh, masterclass w- webinar playlist on YouTube? I have. I've gone through a portion of it, but I haven't found this particular thing or answered in it yet. All right, so. So, so definitely watch uh, the last one. I talked about trend lines. 
first of all, there is no, it's not about the line. It's about the trend. So you're trying to just, I'll say a few things and I'll get to exactly what you're asking. Um, first, it's not about the trend. It's about a line. It's about the trend. Like the purpose of a trend line is to identify a trend, not a line. So it's not exactly as important, exactly where you draw is the point I made earlier. Number one, number two, the, the, the break of a diagonal trend line, the purpose of that is to alert you to start watching for a horizontal zone break, right? You don't make a trade based on a horizontal, a, a diagonal break because it can come back and retest it all the way down or all the way up if you're trying to short it, right? So a diagonal break, the purpose of that is to alert you to start watching for a horizontal break, which you can structure your thesis on and define your risk based on either being above or below. Um, based on the rules of classical charting, the um, the longer the the time, the longer the trend line is, the more important it is in terms of the span of time it covers. Number one, number two, the more tests, the more tests of it, two things happen. The more tests of it, the more likely it will break, but also the more important it is. So you kind of factor all those things in in your analysis when understanding how to use trend lines. Okay, awesome. Right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Pre appreciate you. All right, folks. I'm Big Chad's on Twitter. You can find me at. Big chats on Twitter. If you don't follow me, please consider doing that now. Um, there's a link at the top of the spaces with some information on my YouTube channel. I have free masterclass webinars that will teach you the basics of technical analysis. I have the free version of my book, Trading Wisdom, 50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know, which is available on Amazon, Kindle, hardcover, audiobook narrated by me, and paperback. Uh, it's got great reviews, 4.8 out of 5 stars. Um, hope you check that out or check out the free version. And I'm also a founding analyst at Bitcoin Live, something I'm incredibly proud to be part of. Uh, let's see. Venom. Venom, what would you like to say? It is your time. Yo, Chits, thank you for having me, man. Uh, cool. I'm a What's big up? secret fan. Okay, okay. And um, I know maybe it's off topic, but I've heard a lot of people ask questions about like... Um, my charts and and then you know the long positions and the short positions but do yeah. you think people will come to a point that they realize crypto is not just like i throw 10k at something and it's probably gonna 100x or do you think people are gonna start to like have a deep dive into certain cryptos and and make the like the ecosystem grow in a positive way i think some people will continue to work in the ecosystem i mean no doubt i mean you have people who are working on who are developers you have vcs and then you have retail and retail is usually buying you know 20 times 20x what the vcs are getting in so you've got an ecosystem and then you've got all the people who are trying to pump things to create volatility to create liquidity to create a market but also to help unwind tokens or unwind developer equity all that good stuff um then there's other people like me. I'm just going to trade it. I'll trade it because it's an it's an asset class with volatility. It's got liquidity. It's got volatility. It has um, participants that have that that will express relative strength from time to time or relative weakness, and, and I, the ability to take advantage of that. Um, there's it's a clearly trending market. If you look at Bitcoin, it's been unbelievably not easy, but logically it's trended. I mean, you can go watch my YouTube videos. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not nailing every move. Of course, nobody does, but like, it's been incredibly logical. It's rejected most of the time where you've expected to reject. It's bounced most of, the time, most of the time where you've expected it to. It's performed in like a logical way. So it's a trending market. You can, you can analyze it. I like that. Um, the future of it, who knows, you know, adoption, regulation. This is a great conversation for a cigar and a bottle of wine. So anybody can guess. Um, and, we, and we're all approaching this market kind of in our own ways. So for me, it's just price action. Um, and if it's still here, I'll continue to trade it, talk about it, teach it, and learn from it. Ah, just thank you very much, man. And uh, especially about the cigar tip, I'm uh, definitely going to think about that one. All right, bro. No doubt. Thanks for stepping up. Uh, Ahmad, it's your turn. Ahmad Sahar, what's going on? Ahmad Sahar, folks, make sure Twitter has access to your microphone. We'll do a few more of these. Looks like a lightning round gone through uh, most of you. Ahmad, what's up? I'm going to give you a five count, Ahmad, and then it'll move on. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's see. Bitcoin sniff, Jake Sidoli. Hey, Chats, how's it going? Good, dude. What's going on with you? Yes, yeah, so I've been trading by a year. Um, 
made made a lot of money in the past year, but then nice. lost. It. Well, I mean, I lost it all in the bet in this bear market. So not exactly, but yeah. It's, well, if you um, didn't make okay, but go ahead. Gotcha. But yeah, I mean, it's it's been a humbling experience to try and learn everything at the moment. It's been good. So yeah. nobody nails it the first time around. I mean, that's you know. Yeah, I think the biggest mistake I made is like I left too much money on my trading account. Oh, you know, that's a great, you know, I always coach the successful traders to transfer out uh, their profit uh, every week because, you know, otherwise you're tempted to raise your risk threshold. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, my question was um, for, do you have like an exact like trading plan you use or do you kind of just yep. go with the flow of what you see? So yes. like, do you write yes. all your stuff down? Yes, yes, yes. And yes, I have a plan. I have. Um, and it's not a perfect plan. It's evolving. But um, and by the way, so my third, fourth, my fifth book is um, that I planned is like a poker trading crossover book. And kind of the thesis of it is I'm breaking up trade setups into tiers, like a ranking system, like in poker, pocket aces is top tier. Yeah. And, you know, kings, you know, queens, ace, kings, suit, all these, you have these tiers of hands. So trading setups are, are that way. So like if I see a head and shoulders top that fails, like a right shoulder, like the trade on ADA, I don't remember that when it happened, but it was on the way up to three dollars. It had a head and shoulder top failure. That was like a, you know, ten an A plus signal. So right. I look for certain things like that. You don't always get that. If I'm lower time frame trading, I'm always watching for an up thrust. If I'm trying to short um, a false breakout, the same thing. I'm looking for a spring for a long. I'm trying to look at a price structure. Is there an ascending triangle? What am I looking at? Yeah. Uh, what is the price move moving average relationship? So when I'm entering a trade. Unless I'm bored, which happens too, and I'll just trade because I'm bored. I'm human, right? Um, and but but if I'm I, if I have a thoughtful trade and that is a serious trade, it's I'm entering because of a spring or an up thrust. I, I write down why I do it. I write down what I'm thinking and feeling at the time as well. That's my fourth book, the Trading Journal. So I'm I'm creating these these journal entries of, for myself of my trades. You have to monitor yourself throughout the trade. I mean, I'm defining my stop loss. It's before I enter, put any money in play. I've already defined when I know my idea will fail. And, yeah, right. And then can I can I execute that? Do I have discipline? I don't always have discipline. You know, I'm yeah. human like you. So. Yeah, it, it's just like going a lot of like trading forums. And I see a lot, a lot of people well, who are apparently successful traders. And they say you need to do like 100 back tests. You do need to do all these certain things. I was just wondering, do you do that as well? Yeah. Because I it seems it seems kind of rigid. I don't know. It's like it's, you have to be. You have to be Look, the number one predictor of success is discipline, and trading yeah. is about um, trading is about. Here's a few things for you to kind of chew on in your mind. Okay, first of all, trading is about defining your risk. Like if you don't define your risk, the market will. So what does that mean? Every time you have a trade idea, you need to know when it's going to fail. Otherwise, you're holding on to a losing idea, or you're adding to a losing idea, and that's you know capital yeah. destruction. Right. That's one thing. Number two, you have some great traders who some tr great traders only take like one trade a month or one trade a quarter. OK, that's that's something else to think about. That's interesting. If you think about it, what are they doing the rest of the time? They're waiting for opportunity. OK, number two, right. A, a good trade, a good trading opportunity should jump up and hit you in the face. If it doesn't, you're probably really stretching you're probably looking you're reaching right that's number two number three and which kind of aligns with number one risk management is some of the best traders they only win like 25 30 percent of their trades mm. they're managing the risk on the losers and they're they're, they're more than making up for it on the winners so you're not going to win six you know 65 70 percent of your trades nobody does that if they do they're probably lying or they're a better trader than me which are there are many of them so those are my thoughts i hope it's been helpful yeah, yeah, really appreciate it. Appreciate you. Appreciate yeah, you. Thank you, very much. thank you. All right. I'm gonna we have four more people requesting. I'm gonna let you up and that will be it. I'm capping it here. Please wait until I call you. I'm trying to add you up here. Mac, what's going on, Mac? It's your turn. Big Chets, how are you, buddy? Good dude. How are you doing? Uh doing well, enjoying the mountain weather. Hey, listen, Good. sorry about earlier. I had to jump to a client call, uh, but just a quick question for you. I, I know you love to talk about trades. Um, so earlier it was uh, regulations were brought up uh, with your experience trading markets. Uh, do you foresee the same um, uh, mechanisms being enforced through regulation on the crypto market? 
uh, in retarding volatility. So yeah, like, I made that point before. And by the way, I just had to remove someone. Um, when I bring you up, I will bring you on and I'm going to mute you. If you keep unmuting yourself, I, I'm going to remove you. So, folks, you need to follow the rules. Um, yeah, I made this point. It's a great point. I mean, great question. I've kind of this is my idea. And it's not I'm not an FA folk guy, but I feel like the more there is adoption over time, I think volatility will trend down. Right. Because as, as the kind of monies will be more sucked into legacy markets and you're, you're unlikely to have these crazy moves, I think, 10 or 15 years down the road. Um, I just think volatility long term will trend down on crypto uh, if adoption, especially legacy adoption, trends up. So given the <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> given the ongoing and upcoming regulations that that we're seeing as we wake up every day. Do you feel like the the growing statement that this is the last great bull run of crypto uh, is valid? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, anything's valid until it's until the price proves it invalid. Um, right. I'm not a fundamental analyst. I just think, yeah, we'll have another bull run. But I could, I could see a nice. I could see a. I could see a bottom at the end of the year, and then it bounce to like 50k, and then set a lower high. Right. We could have another epic bull run. It doesn't mean it's it's a brand new all time high. Or maybe it will do it. Like the price will disprove any thesis once it does. But what I look at is that the old long-term trend in Bitcoin is weakened, and that's a problem. We've never spent this much time below the weekly MA200. We have never before broken below our prior all-time high. So we have a weakened long-term trend. So you have to be open-minded to the fact that we might be heading for a long-term bear winter. What if the price breaks down below 10K and turns 10K into resistance? For like two years. I can see that happen. I'll trade it all the way. It'll be boring. Everyone will be miserable. But by it's going to wash out. If that happened, it would wash out a lot of market participants. And then you could have an unbelievable run from 10K to 50K. Okay, right. that'd be an unbelievable bull market. Does that mean we're having no more bull markets? Or does it mean we're not going to like, you know, triple or quadruple or 10X our, our, our all-time high? You know what I mean? It depends. Depends. depends how you define it. Right. But in order to reach 10K, that would require, what, close to 60 percent of all holders dumping their bags right now? It depends how thick the market, mar the uh, order books are. It depends. It depends how much demand is um, is expressed at those different price levels. You can have ca price cascades. You can have market spooks. You can have um, black market events that no one can anticipate. I don't know. But you can you can look at there's there's major support in the in the like 12 to 14 11 to 13k range and you, you see, if you see that then you can at least say okay i could see the price testing that area because there's support there and you've got you've got some weakened long-term trend right which so it's not crazy to say that so if right. you can at least admit that then you say well is there a guarantee that support holds if it doesn't hold it could turn into resistance so right. i don't know if the, i don't know if you need 60 percent of people to give up or however you phrased it but a trend can trend. It can kind of consolidate along the way, right? And, it, and then it can kind of test support. It can break it. It can do all that stuff. So I don't know what's going to happen, really. Nobody does. But yeah, I'm ready. No, I, I'm I ready. understand that. And forgive me if I phrased the question to, you know, No, you didn't. You said it the right way. Access to the crystal ball. <laughs> no, no, you said it the right way. I answered kind of in the way that I think is, is kind of the most uh, instructive. So, all right. I agree. I agree. And I appreciate that. Appreciate you. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. You got it. All right, we're going to wrap it up. I'm going to add the last three listeners. We'll get Paper Hands Capital in there, and then you'll be the last one. Uh, VG, what's going on, VG? It's your turn. You're second to last. Thank you, Jets, for all what you do. Uh, I have two questions. One basic question is which exchange do you use or which exchange is safe to go long or short, you know, with all the things blowing up left and right? I'm kind of scared to use yeah, it. Yeah, I, I don't have good information on that. I'm not an expert on those things. It's not something I want to um, – um, you know, uh, it's not something I've studied professionally. Type okay. of thing. So I think there's other people to give you better information on that. Fundamental analysts. I'm a price specialist. All right. Next question is, as a trader, like, how do you rate yourself in terms of, you know, you get a return, whether it's negative or positive? I like a B minus. I give myself a B minus. No, like, how do you compare? Like, you know, people say, oh, do you beat the market or not? Like, yeah. how do you say so if I'm, I'm on this journey, right? Yeah. And I'm at my return for 2020, 2021, I'm 2022. Yep. 
So how do I rate myself and say, you know what, you are doing fine in this profession? Yeah. So listen, it's not about how you relate to me. It's about how you relate to yourself a year ago. Okay, that is the only thing that mat- matters. Death comparison is the death of joy. So it doesn't matter how well I'm doing. For me, what matters is how well I'm doing compared to how I was doing last six months or last year. How am I doing since I read Peter Brandt's book? What have I learned from that? How am I applying it? Um, am, I, am I still making the same mistakes? Am I making new mistakes, which is better than the old mistakes? New mistakes are fine, right? It's, it's okay to keep making mistakes as long as they're new ones. Think about that, right? So mm-hmm. I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine trading. I could do better. I could do worse, but I am um, happy with my progression. Um, I am enjoying what I'm doing. And, uh, but I think you should focus on your own path and kind of how you're doing in terms of your own progression and your own journey. Okay. So there's no need to compare yourself, whether did you like beat, you know, Bitcoin return or, uh, S and P. Why would you compare yourself to me? Not you, like an index or like if you consider Bitcoin as an index. I mean, what's the point of that? To make you feel good or feel bad? What does that do at the end of the day? You're playing with your emotions, right? Folk, mm-hmm. What matters is, are you still making the same mistakes? That's it. That's it, okay? Um, what matters is, are you defining your risk? Or are you letting the market define it? Is the market, you know, is the market liquidating you? Or are you triggering your own stop loss? for a small, you know, a small loss so you can trade another trade when a good opportunity steps up. Like that's what it's about. So, you know, these other things, you versus an index, just focus on you versus your own progression. Chart yourself, not nothing else. Okay. Thank you. Thanks to you. Great question. Last one is paper hands capital. You are the last listener today. Last questioner. What's going on? Hey, Chad, how you doing? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Great, great. Cracking, um, cracking. Thanks for everything you do. Uh, thanks thank on you. behalf of everyone on stream. This has been a great stream, so thank you for that. Oh, thank um, you. I, I have a very practical question about trading because I'm kind of trading uh, on my own, uh, following plenty of people on Twitter. But um, you know, I don't actually know any traders myself, so I'm, I can't kind of witness people trading live or anything like that. Um, I'm finding, you know, I'm 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 looking at stuff on Trading View and then jumping into a spreadsheet that I've made where I'm kind of calculating my my risk reward and then jumping to um, jumping to Qcoin or jumping to Binance to put the trade in is that is that is that what everyone else is doing or are people kind of using an API on trading view where they can just uh, you know draw up a short pos- position and quick click enter market or I'm just kind of interested in the practicalities about how day traders are entering trades. Uh, are you there, Chet? You might be on mute. Sorry about that. I would say all of the, <laughs> I, I had a great answer. Let me try to say it again. Um, <laughs> so I was going to say all of the above, right? Some are trading from their phone in bed. Some are trading from an iPad tablet. Some are trading from one monitor, some from two. Some are trading equities and crypto. Some just crypto. Um, some are directly linked into TradingView or, or their Coinbase app. And their phone. I don't know. There's just a million ways that people are doing it, right? What I, you know, but when you were asking the question, I had an interesting thought. I, you know, I think actually the more ways to slow yourself down before you enter the trade, the better. Mm. So that's, I mean, because you need to pause because impulsivity, chasing shiny objects, bore, boredom trading is, you know, that's like your primary opponent. Um, so, you know, what I, I, I'm, I have a basketball in my hand. I'm going to go shoot some jump shots before the rain comes. And you know, <laughs> when I'm trading, what I like to do, and I'm not sure, I actually step outside a couple free throws, maybe shoot around a little bit. And then I come back and I'm like, okay, you know, let me, let me think about it some more. So the more ways you can actually slow yourself down, you know, there's this whole thing where it's like, we don't want to miss a move. I don't want to miss the bottom. That's a myth. Like you're never going to get the whole move. I'd rather, you know, you, what you want to do is ride a trend. If it's a bottom, the trend will reverse. It will recapture support. And if it's genuine reversal, now you can ride it for weeks or months or whatever the trend is. And the same thing with like trading. If you're in a rush to trade, your money will be in a rush to go somewhere else. Sure. So, so what what what's your what's your process, Cheds? If you're on TradingView and you're it's looking hectic. for a scalp, it's hectic. <laughs> no, um, I'm I'm always kind of watching the charts. Um, my worst trades come at night in bed when I'm winding down with a phone in my hand. 
and uh, I'm just kind of just playing around, uh, usually small position size. But when I'm making serious trades, I'm scanning on trading view. Um, and I'm looking at certain apps I have. And I look at, I, I um, like, especially when it's like a bear, bear market, I like to look to see what are the biggest up movers today. And I look to see if there's a short setup. So I look for like major price movements. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll sort by percentage change. And then I'll go look at those charts and see what the price structure is. Oh, wow, the price now is forming this. Or, oh, the price is just about to hit a key level. Let me watch this now on a lower time frame. Let me set um, an alert. Let me make a mental note. Let me write something on the chart. So I, I kind of generate trade ideas that way. I also um, get like ticker ideas from Bitcoin Live because people request stuff I've never heard of. Like, I don't, I can't watch all this stuff. So, I, you know, because twice a week I do, I do like altcoin requests, whatever these people, whatever the, the, the members that, um, are, are requesting. And I'll be like, oh, I've never heard of this one. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, most of the time they're terrible because most of the time people just, you know, will ride a downtrend. But, you know, there'll be times where I see one. I'm like, oh, this looks pretty good. I hadn't noticed this. And, you know, this one has relative strength. So really from anywhere you can get your trade ideas, but they have to filter through your process. And that's based on your your trade structuring, right, which is defining your trade idea when it fails, you know, your stop loss. Um, you know, if you're, you know, you got to think about it this way. Like it needs to be such a good idea that you can explain to your friend why they should enter the trade, not yeah. based on like the technology, but based on like the, the technical analysis, based on the trend analysis, right? Look at, you know, um, every time it's touched this level, it's bounced off of it, or we just broke out of a key level, you know, look at, you know, look at the, the up thrusts. You got to have something, you know, you got to be able to, it can't just be like, Oh, I think it's going to go down or, Oh, I think it's going to go up. Yeah, of course. Like, you know, kind of thing. So, um, my, pro I have a process, but I'm still working on it. I don't always stick to it. I'm not a perfect trader. I'm not a perfect human, but my best trades are thought out. They're journaled. Um, and then they're kind of analyzed after the fact. And do you use a centralized exchange chats or, or a DEX uh, to make your no trades? Comment. No comment. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, yeah. thank you anyway. That's, thank that's you. really useful. It's great to have you up here today. Um, I'll do one more and just thanks for stepping up, man. All right. Cheers. Cheers to you. Last one, Sandra. We'll, we'll get you in. Sandra Burnett, you're our last person here today. What would you like to ask? What would you like to say? Hi, is that Chids? Hi, how yeah, you doing? Thanks, Chids. And, and just to say a huge <clears throat> thank you. Um, I've been following you on Bitcoin Live um, and on oh. Twitter. Um, I blew oh. up my account despite all the good instruction I was getting. And so mm. <laughs> I'm starting from scratch yeah. again, um, but mm. still learning while I can't trade. I'm still following and learning and trying to get better at this. Um, I've just seen a lot over the last year and a half, seen a lot of your um, uh, videos and tutorials. Um, you made a comment the other day that I wanted to explore further, and I, apologies if you've covered it already. Um, okay. But w w there was a tweet on July 27th about how to interpret a four-hour four hour lower to upper Bollinger Band move. Yeah, I yeah. tried to look that up because it was real specific. It was the four-hour lower to upper Bollinger Band move. Um, but you're so prolific that, I mean, all this, I tried dipping in and out and trying to find it, but I couldn't. I assume that it it, put, it, it, it sort of indicated there'd been new back down, but it didn't do that. So is there a kind of nuance there specific to... Great question. Great question. And, um, you know, on the subject of blowing up accounts, I've done that many times. And it, I mean, it really hurts. So I get yeah. that. I can feel yeah. that. So. Um, so, and also thank you for being part of Bitcoin Live. I'm really proud of what we do there. And um, it's all about you, you folks. Um, well, love to so everybody. Like, Bitcoin yeah. Live is so worth it. Um, I so much appreciated oh. what I learned there. So thank you. Oh. Mm. That's so nice. Thank you. Um, so for our, so you think about when the price is trending. Um, and especially when it's in kind of a choppy trending range, like a bear flag or a bull flag. So it's, you know, the four hour lower to upper, upper Bollinger Band move 
it's, it's kind of like when I do one out when I I'll also one hour lower to upper ball and your band move. Um, but it's a, even bigger because it's on the four hour, like four hours, a pretty good, like trading time frame for Bitcoin. That's why we watch the four hour MA 200. You know, we've talked about that a lot over time, but a four hour lower to upper ball and your band move. It's kind of sustainable because it's, yeah, you've had, it's, it's, you know, it, I'm not very clearly making my point here. It's, long enough time frame that there's enough significance to the move and and on any time frame a lower to upper bollinger band move is a key to look for it to maybe revert back to the middle bollinger to look for it to kind of revert back to the mean or the middle right mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. it's saying that, we, that we've just had a pendulum swing from the left to the right okay i'm pointing out but it, now it's a four hour pendulum swing not just a one hour right so it's really when you talk when i talk about those i'm i'm, I'm basically saying hey there's a, a pendulum swing that just happened Right. So if we're in a downtrend and we just had a four hour lower to upper Bollinger Band move, you should start looking for a short. You start to look for price weakness. You start to see if we get an up thrust or if we got a shooting star, Gravestone Doji, you know, failed, you know, failed continuation pattern or something. But that, you know, or conversely, if we're in um, an uptrend and we've now had a four hour upper to lower Bollinger Band move, you start to look to buy the dip. Right. Um, because you're trading with the trend. Right. You're not trading both sides of that four hour Bollinger, but you're taking the side of the trade um, with the trend. Right. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to say. And yeah, I'm, I'm prolific. I say a lot of stuff and some of it's valuable. Sometimes I just want to talk to you guys. So. <laughs> Done. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I wasn't yeah. sure, you know, whether that. Was yeah. different from a daily lower to upper. Or, it is. It's just not yeah. as strong. It's just not as strong. It's not as strong. Okay. Yeah. And that's, um, I mean, you look at daily, look at what we did daily. Um, did you, have you seen, so you saw my last report. Um, and you know how I talked about like the, the, the daily trend changing a little bit with the higher lows, like the reaction to the higher lows. Um, I didn't see your last, I, I had to cancel my Bitcoin oh, live. Oh, fair I enough. Was, I'm not, um, I have nothing to trade with oh, right yeah. now. Oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Very little. No, that's so, okay. I'm starting real, again. I'm I should have learning. been, yeah, well, you're here and we're talking yes. and you're learning. And if you look at what the price did like July 2nd to, to July 8th, that was a daily, that was a daily lower to upper Bollinger Band move. Right. And then we July 13th to the 20th, another one, right? So we had these sharp, the point I made in Bitcoin Live and I made earlier in the spaces, we had these sharp reactions to higher lows being set. So we set a higher low, Early July, boom, bounce the upper Bollinger Band on the daily. And that's where it rejected. Look at the long leg doji on July mm-hmm. 8th, all the way back down. Boom, nice green outside bar, July 30th at the lower Bollinger Band. What yeah. did that outside bar lead to? Boom, upper Bollinger Band move. Then we had the Bear Harami, high wave spinning top July 20th, back down to the higher low on July 26th, and then right up to the upper Bollinger Band. Um, but then after that, um, we, instead of having a sharp move off the higher low of August 4th, we started to consolidate. So the point I was making twofold there was the upper, the lower to upper Bollinger Band move in the daily and that we've ch- uh, broken that chain of, of um, strong bounces off of higher lows in that we've now consolidated. So that's a lot okay. of technical, technical speak, but, um, you know, you can lick your wounds and come back only when you have a little bit of confidence. I mean, that that's going to be the danger. Don't come back until you have a little bit of confidence. Um, you know, for me, when I do that, like, I'll go read a textbook. It, you know, I got to right. do something like that, you know what I mean, to, to right. uh, get some confidence back. So. Well, I'm keeping up the learning, and I'll certainly come back as soon as I've got a portfolio that I can work with. <laughs> that's understood. the trick. Uh, yeah. Indeed, indeed. But I well, will be back, that's for sure. Thank you so much. I'm really happy you joined us today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. All right, folks, that's wrapping up this space as I got through to everyone who requested, minus a couple people who kept unmuting themselves. Um, I want to say thank you. I enjoy these conversations. Wherever you are in the world, you hear me. I get to reach out to you. We're connecting. We're talking. Um, and, um, you know, the folks who are coming up and asking questions, you're adding great value because you're, you're helping the conversation. And those of you, you who are listening and not asking questions, you're also adding value. You're adding to the conversation. You're here. You're part of it. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I am on Twitter at Big Cheds. Please consider following me there. Um, this will be uploaded as a replay to my YouTube channel, Cheds Trading. Definitely want to check out the playlists. Uh, I'd recommend the playlist Trading Wisdom, which is the free version of my book, my best-selling book that's available on Amazon, Kindle, hardcover, paperback. 
and audiobook format narrated by me, which is which I had a lot of fun doing. If you're serious about learning how to trade, I would recommend joining Bitcoin Live. I'm a founding analyst, part of a world-class team. I've been doing my market updates for four years. I, I don't miss an update. Twice a week, middle of the week, end of the week, I sit down, we talk about the market, I answer your questions, I do your requests, something I am really, really proud uh, to be doing. I stand behind it 100%. Um, but anyway, folks, thanks for listening to these spaces. I love these conversations. I love that I can just hit a couple buttons um, and, and bring you in and we can talk. And um, whatever whatever's happening, wherever you are in your life, I would say that I wish you well. I hope you, I hope you um, have a great day, a great week. And I look forward to talking to you next time. All right? Big Cheds out. That was fun. Folks, thank you. For those who are um, here live in the chat room, I see you. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. That was, I love these spaces. I love the fact that Twitter has them. Um, and there really aren't that, you know, you, there aren't that many great conversations. I try to do them myself, but uh, it takes a lot out of me when I do it. So I have to be in the right mood. I have to be, the, you know, the right, the right frame of mind to give, to be able to answer questions, to be patient, uh, to do all that stuff. So when I have the mojo, um, you know, that's when I do those spaces. I'm on Twitter at Big Cheds. If you don't follow me, please consider following me there. Um, I'd encourage you to follow me or subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is where you are now, Cheds Trading. This video will go into the Twitter Spaces playlist. Um, if you're a fan of my book, which is available now on Amazon, thank you. Uh, the reviews are great. I love that it's, that it's done so well. You can get it for free on the playlist, Trading Wisdom. Uh, check out the Masterclass webinars. They'll teach you how to use your moving averages, set up support and resistance, really just all the stuff you need to know to get going. Check out the long-form interview series. My last one was with Peter Brandt. It was unbelievable. So check that out. Check out my quick market updates. What I do is, yeah, every month or so, uh, I do a quick market update, and I kind of catch you up on my tweets. I explain my tweets, things that you might think are ambiguous. Um, so I do that. Uh, as well. So I hope you enjoy that. Um, I am a founding analyst at Bitcoin Live. Bitcoin Live is legit. It's the best in class educational platform for crypto. I'm just one member in a world class team. There's nothing like it out there. Nothing comes close. Um, and you know, what's cool is when you join, you can go back and, and kind of see what I've been saying for the last few years. And so you can see, you can see it's legit. We have a great team. Um, twice a week, I do a full market update. I stop Whatever I'm doing in my life, even if I'm on vacation, uh, I stop and I do an update. It's important for me to keep practicing, um, and I take my oath uh, to the Bitcoin Live members seriously. So please consider checking that out. But in the meantime, I thank you today. I thank you for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and uh, I look forward to talking to you again soon. All right? Big Cheds out.